Happy, happy hour, everybody. It's another Friday. It's March 26th, and I'm here with the one and only Mac Gamble. Mac, what is going on? Not too much. We made it to Friday. We made We're here. It to Friday. We made it to Friday. It's almost April, um, which almost seems April. impossible to me. I don't know why I'm not wrapping my head around time passing right now. But luckily, it's starting to get warm, so we can actually go outside. We can we can be somewhat social. We can get out of our basements. That may just be me because that's where typically I am each day is in the basement office. So I'm excited looking out the window, sunny. I think it's going to be a nice weekend. Got to get out of the house. Look at that. We have optimism, folks. Welcome to the party. This is great. <laughs> it's going to start raining this afternoon just because I said that. Yeah, no joke. That's It's inevitable, but that's okay because uh, we're going to have a little fun on this podcast as usual. Um, we've had a crazy week inside nudge, just so you guys know, um, you know, we had our, our head of sales, had a baby. Congrats to Katie. I think we mentioned that last week, but mentioning it again, it's a big deal folks. Mm -hmm. Um, welcome to the world wells and Katie, hope you're doing well. Um, you've also saddled poor Mac with a hell of a lot of responsibility. <laughs> if anyone books calls with our team at this point for the next couple months, don't be surprised when when I potentially am on them. So that's right. Just to say, I'm popping up on a lot of calls around the world at this point. It's the best. You don't always get a founder and CEO on a on an intro call, but with us, it can happen right now. You never know. That's mainly just because we're training the new the new face to most people on our email list at this point. The new with Sarah who joined our team. Hey, Sarah. And found out she's a nickname Scaldi. Found that out yesterday. It's not scalding like scalding water, it's scaldy. So maybe we have some differentiation on our team now. We, we seem to have a lot of like repeat names. Yeah, you why does that happen? Sarah's, yeah. I don't yeah. know. It is kind of funny though. You'd think with but, a small team we could avoid that, but we did not succeed. No, no. We seem to find duplicate cloning. We must be cloning each other. It must be what's going We're on. cloning nudgers. Um, well... An interesting week in the world of Nudge Coach. The the upside, Matt gets to have a lot of conversations during the week with great people. Yeah, like, super interesting. Like who are listening? Um, so lots of lots of interesting ideas coming to us. But we've also just had such a crazy time this week that one of the things that we wanted to potentially do is just throw out a bunch of things that you might have uh, kind of handy in your coaching business and talk about where they fit into an online coaching business and how. And just pick through a bunch of these ideas, almost like a rapid fire thing, except I hope we actually talk enough about them to be valuable to you, of course. There was, and, and this is gut reaction stuff, because this, yeah. Phil put a list together and I have skimmed it once. So this yeah. is going to be a lot of off the cuff. So it should be entertaining. Yep. Yeah. I put a list together at 545 this morning uh, when our infant child was eating a bottle or drinking a bottle. Do you eat a bottle? <laughs> yeah. E eating a bottle. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> that gives you a sign of how much I've slept. I just called it eating a bottle. Um, okay. Well, what the hell? Let's get into it and see how this goes. This could go completely sideways. I can't wait to find out. Um, all right. Let me, I guess, try to table set a little bit. We got a full range of things. And again, I just picked stuff off the top of my head. You may have some of these in your business. This might be a place you post content, content you have, uh, things you do within the context of your business. Um, my God, we could start anywhere with this, but how about we start with, let's spin the roulette table. Uh, well, we're on a podcast right now. Mac, where the hell did podcasts fit within a coaching business? I, like I didn't know you were going to do dealer's choice, Russian roulette here. I thought you were just going to go down. Okay. So podcast. I think, you know, well, let, let me use an example here because I, th I think this is something that's going to be, um, is going to relate to anybody who does content like this. Very, very regularly when I hop on a call, an intro call, um, and it's seen in the nudge roll time, if I'm on some of these intro calls, as you mentioned, I will have, and I'd say it's probably 10% of the time, a person will say, oh, I listened to your podcast. Hmm. Immediately when a person says that, there is some level of kind of, I can see it in their face. Some level of trust has already been established. There's rapport. There's the, you know, from a sales perspective, walls are down. It's a lot easier to connect because they feel like they already have a relationship with me because they've heard us kind of rambling on here. So yeah. I think there's a little bit of, yes, 
proving, like validating that you know what you're talking about, you have experience in the industry, whatever it is. But I think it's also too, just it's the scalable way you can build a relationship with a lot of people at once. Yes. Well played. Um, I absolutely concur with those two items. Sorry, I went random order on you, by the way. Um, I Didn't made it even made it. harder when I had given you no, no time no. to prep at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but imagine that. So, you know, we, and I get to experience this every now and then too. And luckily a couple of times this very week um, between Mac and myself, we've, we've gotten to hear this, which is always just mm-hmm. like, I can tell you as business owner, when you get to hear that, and you're having the first conversation after you've had a few of them, you're like, oh, thank God, this person knows like what's up. They, they have listened to, they're educated on the yeah. topic we're going to be talking about. Um, it's, a, it's a hell of a weight off. It really does break down mm-hmm. a barrier, like you said. And if you're an avid listener to Nudge Coach Happy Hour, you know that we're just on here talking shit for you know, 30, 40 minutes every day. So every we're Friday. just lucky all three of our listeners booked calls this week. Just, <laughs> that's what we're lucky. So thank you all three listeners. <laughs> uh, Mike, Steve, and Sarah. Thanks guys. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Just our team listening. But no, no, I mean, it, it, it does make a huge difference. It's happened. I don't know. I can think of a handful of times it's happened and it's led to some really neat conversations. And I think it's, you know, like I said, I, it does expedite conversations in a lot of ways. So hundred percent builds a lot of trust without mm-hmm. having to, you know, sacrifice your calendar yeah. as much. Um, and, and for what it's worth, and I wouldn't say we totally fall into this boat. I mean, I, th- I think it does, you know, some of our listeners do sign up for the platform. I know for a fact, some of the customers we work with, some of our partners, and I've heard it before during implementation, some of their primary, I guess, drivers into their offerings are their podcasts. I can think of several right now that I can think of where they say, Hey, most of their customers come from their podcast. And so it's just one of those things, build the relationship, great things happen. It's real. The thing with it, you got to commit to it. You got to do it consistently if it's going to be, mm-hmm. you know, a, a valuable valuable, yep. <laughs> a valuable part of your business. Easy for me to say. Yep. Um, okay. I think we did pretty well in podcast. That's obviously top of funnel stuff. That's getting in front of new people. Um, obviously you can uh, pitch yourself and get on other shows as well. Um, to get in front of other audiences. So Very true. things you can do there. Um, let's get back to the top of the list that I sent, Mac. I think I have them in the same. Oh, geez. Okay. Time. You're actually going to the top of the list. Yeah. Yeah. Dare me. Dare me to do that. Um, social media, Mac. Social media. Social, social, social. Yeah. I, it's funny because I social is a funny, funny game. Because just like I said, how we have some customers we work with that have said podcasting is how they get a lot of their customers. I have also talked with some of our customers I've talked to have said like they have social media as their big driver, which is so interesting to me because I think for some social media is maybe like the one of the like top, top, top pieces of their funnel where it's, hey, they're, they're posting other types of content and then they're, or excuse me, they're writing other pieces of content or recording and then social media is just kind of how they kind of put it out there and it's just a way in which to stay in front of people and stay relevant. We have some partners though that, and I think systems like Instagram, doing things like Instagram Live and Reels have made it almost like a mini podcasting platform in some kind of yeah. way where you can almost use, just like we use podcasting, you can use platforms now like Instagram and Facebook to do very similar styles of content in connectivity with, with prospects and with audience. So I think there's two very distinct buckets. It's the whole, hey, further kind of, getting your content and kind of using it to drive people to content, or you can actually now use it almost like a mini podcasting or, or production type of environment. Yeah, it's a great point. And, you know, yes, let me be perfectly, you can't be great at everything, right? We're mm-hmm. not great at social media. In fact, if you want to go on social media and make fun of our social media accounts, feel free. I would, nothing would make yep. me happier. That would be fun for me. We um, are good at it. I'll be yeah, the first to say not consistent. We love the podcasting, video making, um, writing content. It's just not our strong suit. And eventually, you know, we'll bring someone in to do it better for us. But mm-hmm. <laughs> right now, it's not a priority. As we're the first step is admitting we have a problem. That's right. That's right. Those steps are important. Um, but, you know, top of funnel, it's critical stuff for a lot of businesses. I mean, especially in, mm-hmm. I would say, well, at least for us and the conversations we have, especially a lot of the kind of solopreneur health and wellness space folk, uh, nutrition, especially have a 
do a hell of a job uh, generating interest on platforms like Instagram, especially uh, in the conversations we're having. Which I have a really interesting example of this. So I, I was actually having dinner with some friends this past weekend and one of the people there had signed up and was working with a remote coach. And he, I was asking him about it because, you know, just really relevant to what we do. And he was like, you know, I'd been following this guy for a long time on social media. And he felt like as he was explaining it, he felt like, hey, he had really kind of come to understand that guy's thought process, methodologies, views on, you know, this was more of kind of health nutrition base. Mm -hmm. So his views on like nutrition, what's working, what's not. And so I think there's definitely that layer of validating that you know what you're talking about. Like, I think that's, that's the box you're checking for sure. Like you've got experience, you know what you're doing. But then I think there's that kind of, I don't know, the unmeasurable, the subjective, the, the flair to it, that, that uniqueness. Yeah. And for him, this person I was having dinner with, this one remote coach he had signed up with who had, I think, hundreds of thousands of followers, just his approach was unique and different. And yeah. so for this guy I was having dinner with, that was the direction he wanted to go. And he had never met this person, but he just all through social media. That's what led to that relationship. <laughs> there you go. I think the advice there to tease it out is let your freak flag fly on social media. <laughs> That's kind of it. I think it it, it is... I mean, you, you say this all the time too. It's if I want to learn about a topic, Google is there. You can Google yep. anything, but you still have people dealing with different problems, whether it's health, whether it's you know sales, relationship, whatever it is. And people are still working with coaches. So there's a reason people work with coaches. And I th- yep. it really comes down to, I think, who that person is, the personality, yep. um, you know. Share values. I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff that you can put out there. You know, you listen to us all the time. You probably know that we don't take ourselves too seriously, but we're absolutely about throwing out actionable advice that can actually help you get somewhere. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's the type of vibe we're putting out there. If you enjoy that, come work with us. We would love yep. to have you. Um, if you want someone who is just like straight by the book, going to check boxes over and over again, which, yeah, we're trying to do that and be efficient and as effective as possible. But, you know, we might have a little bit more flair going on while we do. Yeah. You might be better off going somewhere else and you might feel a little bit more comfortable and that's great. And that's one of the, you know, the great opportunities of, of, you know, putting content out in any way, shape or form, yeah. you get people in the door who are really aligned with you either in terms of shared values or mm-hmm. personality or whatever. They know what they're getting when they come in the door. So those little things that could potentially, uh, create new and, and unnecessary barriers and like a sales process Mm -hmm. are kind of broken down a lot of times. So social media, super value. Hey, you know what? Business coaches, I'm seeing a lot on LinkedIn, you know, doing some consistent posting, um, great place to, to grow an audience. If you're, if you're in that realm, of course, that's a pretty logical career coaching on LinkedIn. We're seeing, seeing a lot of posting on that. I I think that's a really important part too, is aligning with the right platform because exactly to your point you know you you could you know i'm sure there are some people that are just doing everything on instagram um but i i think if you were in the world of more like business business executive performance coaching i think linkedin is probably going to be a more appropriate channel for you um you know now with new systems like clubhouse you, you know there's so many different ways you can engage an audience that you know, there's something to be said for doing it in multiple ways, but I think always, you know, if you can find the one you feel comfortable with and you stay, you know, we, you just mentioned it, one you can actually stay on top of is the hardest. Yeah. People kind of fizzle out at some point. Clubhouse wasn't on my list. That's a good one. Um, where does Clubhouse fit it? Well, basically just said it, you know, it's another, another open space to get mm-hmm. your message out, uh, find people who vibe with you and align on, on values. Um, yeah, great stuff. Um, All right. Uh, I'm going to bounce around a little bit. Written content. Why don't we jump to written content, blog posts, um, stuff like that. I think this will make sense to a lot of people. And I think maybe we should open this up to like your website entirely and talk about the Mm. role of your website or your website can play because there's some variants there and you see a lot of different, you know, strategies, um, methods, you know, Mm -hmm. for, for us, for example, in our business, written content is huge and it's how we grew our kind of initial base uh, without spending an impossible amount of money or just throwing ad spend at the wall. Um, Cause sometimes you have to tease out kind of your, your target mm-hmm. audience and have people start to come to you before you, you know, know that you have alignment and have a model that can scale. Um, 
So written content was always huge for us. So the role of our website was yes, present concisely, cleanly, um, the value of the product, but also a place to put a lot of written content, um, build a blog, build a following that way for people who are searching for relevant topics. Mm -hmm. And in the early days of remote coaching and online coaching, we were putting out content when a lot of people weren't. Mm -hmm. So it allowed us to kind of establish ourselves in that, in that realm. Yeah. One thing I, and there's, I think a lot of people that still don't fully understand the purpose of a blog. And I, I, think one thing just to be really aware of is, you know, that written content is how, you know, search engines like Google, Bing, whatever you're using, you know, know what you do and help drive people to your website. So if you just have a website, you don't have any written content around it. The search engines really have no idea what you do. (laughs) And so it's going to make it really hard for them to bring people to your site. And so I think that's a good, you know, make sure you're aware of that. But two is just being aware of the type of content you write, make sure it aligns with the type of people you want to bring in. Cause if yeah. you're, you know, if you're trying to be an expert in, you know, pick, pick a subject, um, say I'm coaching people around how to, uh, I don't know, lose weight. I'm just going to use something really generic and easy. Yeah. I would want to make sure all my content that I'm writing is loosely related to weight loss. <laughs> if, if I start writing blog posts about, you know, my favorite video games I play or something completely random, that's going to start bringing eyeballs to your website that may have zero to do with your actual business. So just be very cautious with the type of content and what you're writing on your website. Yeah, there's a, um, there's a danger for sure if you start kind of thinking about search just at a high level without, you know, really understanding that everyone needs to be, able, who you're attracting needs to be really aligned with what you do. Like you're not going to, oftentimes draw someone in with a juicy headline and then change their opinion entirely or what they're looking mm-hmm. for entirely when they get there. That it doesn't work that way. You got to put out content and what you want to provide to someone in that area so that when they get there, they're already primed to, you know, have interest, learn mm-hmm. from it, um, see that you're the person, you know, to, to guide them. Um, but, you know, we'll see from time to time, someone just like, chasing news stories and headlines and trying to weave them in some elaborate way into life coaching or business coaching or, or, Mm. uh, you know, fitness coaching, whatever. And, you know, that's, I think a bit of a fool's errand to be honest. Yeah. I think for some reason, some people think a blog and maybe this isn't, maybe this is what people first thought it was when they didn't really understand what a blog was is they kind of just thought it was something like, Hey, someone's blogging. That just means they kind of ramble online and just kind of document their life. And it's like, no, let's, you know, blogs are supposed to be very purposeful and aligned exactly to your, to your, you know, to your topic or where you're trying to be a thought leader and where your product is. Yeah. That's a journal. You can keep that by your yeah. bedside. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's totally great. Great journal, exercise, bedside. very healthy for you to journal, great mm-hmm. for your mental health. I subscribe to that entirely. However, probably not going to attract a lot of leads for your business. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's a really good point. Yeah. Okay. I think we crushed that one. Journals, not no role, no role. Journals aren't blogs, two different things. No no role in your coaching business other than maybe kind of emotional uh, support (laughs) at the end of a hard day. (laughs) Yeah. We're off the rails again. Um, Okay. Let's jump to another one. How about video content? Mm. This can be all over the place, boys and girls. Yeah. So video content you can take the several different directions. So I think for some people, you know, we talk about how we like to podcast and we, we also post that on YouTube. So mm-hmm. some of you may be actually watching this on YouTube. So if you are, hello, waving hey. at you. Um, I think for some people, and this is back to kind of find your, find your medium. And I think this is something where for, for some folks, video has been, and I know there are individuals out there who have really done well creating like how-to videos Mm-hmm. to use on YouTube as kind of the way they attract eyeballs. And I think I tend to find there's kind of that bucket where instead of written content like blog, where a lot of companies like us probably do more blog to kind of draw the eyeballs. Some people have really jumped into video, which I know everyone's kind of generally shifting more and more to video, but I think that's one. I think you could also argue that video is maybe a nice complement to what you're doing on maybe social in yeah. terms of you know, social, maybe you're teasing some kind of video post you've made or kind of some kind of teaser video. Um, 
there's so many different ways it can weave in, but I think it further humanizes the experience and allows you to kind of build that connection, build rapport. So face-to-face -face time at scale is a really important piece. And I think that's partly why we've had some success with some of those kind of, you know, intro calls, like we've said, where someone comes and they feel like they have a relationship with us. You know, we try to put our faces everywhere and not hide behind the email. Yeah. Face-to-face -face time at scale is perfect representation. I think of a high level humanizing the experience at a high level. Uh, but totally like video can play a role in like every phase, every, yeah. every tier of the funnel. If you want to look at it that way, every step of the flywheel, if you want to look at it that way. Um, I mean, so for example, you know, this is going to get pushed up to YouTube. This will be a video that lives out there in the world. This is top of funnel, getting our faces in front mm -hmm. of people. There's just something about getting your face in front of someone that they can start to relate put a name to a face. They, mm -hmm. They're more comfortable. There's a, a human element element of that that's just ingrained in us to be more comfortable with someone who we've mm -hmm. seen their face. Um, but, you know, down to one of the best uses that you sort of mentioned was, you know, onboarding at scale, for example, into an app or a social platform or like a community platform, online course, even, you know, all these things, right? You can do brief videos to help guide through critical steps of kind of a, a customer journey or client journey as they're working with you when you can't really scale wise be hands-on with people in that moment. So mm -hmm. within the context of, for example, creating your own nudge app, um, a lot of times like to onboard board someone onto a program, I would record a quick video and say, Hey, listen, you're going to download the app. This is what it's for. It's going to, you know, help you always have all your programming for me in one place and one place to reach out to me where I'll always get back to you. Um, all you have to do to get started and get access to my program is download the app and put in the invite ID. And just by doing that on a video, it's very easy to follow. That's why YouTube is just full of how to videos because it just something about video makes it easy to follow steps. People love and how to videos. And it's a relatable way to get started. So yeah, can totally play a role all the way through, but you know, attracting people, it's a place to grow an audience. If you're comfortable on screen, um, like mm -hmm. we're still trying to get, um, and if, you know, if you need a scalable, relatable way to, to kind of move people through your funnel, I think, I think it's great across the board. Um, all right, gear shift. You ready for another one? Yeah. I think we got time for one more. Then we got to do the Instagram, the Instagram, 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 Instagram. Live, live, live. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we've already covered social media. So how about, you know what? I've been getting a lot of questions about this lately. How about online courses? Yeah. Online courses. I feel like, God, it, it I feel like there's such like a fickle thing. Um, You're a fickle, fickle beast. Fickle beast is a good way to put it. So online courses, one of the best lead captures we probably have ever used was before we, we launched the freemium version was a kind of mini course on online coaching. And we use that. I, I swear it was out there for multiple years. And yep. I think it, you know, take encapsulate some of what we talked about with kind of podcasting and, and social media where it kind of frames you as a, as a thought leader kind of build humanizes the experience because you're getting FaceTime. If it's actually you on the videos of the course, um, I think it, it can start, um, being a nice compliment to maybe some of your free content. Well, it still could be free, but in terms of some of maybe your written or your social media content, yeah, it's available everywhere, right? I think, yeah. And I think it makes sense as a logical next step in the funnel. Like that's obviously not your highest level of the funnel. Cause that's not how a person's maybe discovering you. But I think in terms of building that relationship and moving them down your funnel, I think an online course or mini course is great for that. Um, so it, it, a lot of benefit to it. it obviously it's going to take more time versus just maybe creating a checklist or some some kind of downloadable document yeah. on your website so it's a higher cost to maybe put one together but i think you get a lot more value in terms of being a lead capture and building a relationship absolutely great lead capture so you have your you know your uh blog post your podcast your ads all the stuff that kind of grabs attention first that maybe this next step is hey try to you know check out this free mini course on x uh aligns with the outcome mm -hmm. your ideal client is looking for um, it is a great way to do that. We we had a lot of success with it. We're going to roll some similar things back out. Although, you know, I'm trying to say this without being disparaging to the idea of online courses. <laughs> How do I do this? How do I navigate these waters, Max? So here you it, go. People don't, most people don't finish online courses. So don't be offended by it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is what it is. 
So one way you could kind of artfully play this up to your own advantage as a coach who believes in the value of coaching um, is even mentioning along the way of the online course, like, Hey, you know, I know you're listening to this, maybe even passively. If you work with me directly, you're going to have much better results and you're definitely going to get through all this. You know, all this yeah. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, that can be played up throughout the process. And, and one of the great things about it is people will realize that they're not as good at going through self-driven things as they're doing it and possibly even realize along the way, Oh, I should sign up for coaching with this guy because I'm not doing it well enough. Yeah. Yeah, man. You, it's so funny. You say that I'm thinking about some of the implementations we're working on right now. And there are multiple working on that are kind of doing this option of self-driven versus self-driven with coaching. And it seems like we are starting to see more people trying to launch kind of a lower cost digital only offering that doesn't have any coaching. Cause I think you're right. I think a lot of people realize they need the additional accountability and you can almost use that digital only as a, as a, a good foot in the door, very approachable offering, low, lower cost. And then I think it probably hits most people like a ton of bricks eventually that, oh God, I can't get through this by myself. So I, I'm seeing that multiple times right now. So it's kind of interesting you brought that up. Yep. Um, all right. So I think we're going to come back to this whole thing again. This might become a bit. Uh, how does X fit into my coaching business? Well, I think we only got to like a 30 year list. So I think this I know. Will keep we had, us a, busy had a surprisingly big list for my kind of five something AM, you know, <laughs> jotting down. <laughs> but no, I think I think it was good. I think this is a good structure. And if new things get we can add new things to the list each week. Yep. If you found it valuable, you can email us at podcast at nudgecoach.com. Or, hey, we are on social media. Like I said, feel free to make fun of our social media accounts that aren't posting enough. Mm -hmm. Um, But more importantly, you can find Mac, whose social media we're about to get on, his Instagram, Mac underscore Gamble, G-A-M-B-I-L-L, on Instagram. We're going to go on his Instagram live right after this. We do it every Friday around... Uh, well, today's a little bit today. earlier because of those calls, but yeah, nine forty-five ish usually. We're going to be in Eastern today. time. Yeah, a little early. So little early. Uh, that's okay. I hope everybody enjoyed this. We're going to come back to it again. Mac, you have any last words? You looked like you were going to say something. Something incredibly profound is going to come out of my mouth on the Instagram live. Oh, what a tease! Oh my. No, God. I didn't have. I didn't have anything. Hope everyone has a good weekend, though. Thank you for tuning in, and look forward to seeing you next week. That's it. See you next week, guys.